Hey guys, so this is our new chapter book read aloud for the month of April. It's called Two Dogs in a Trench Coat Go to School. It is written by Julie Falaco and it is illustrated by Colin Jack. So here's the front cover. Two dogs in a trench coat go to school. This is a silly story about these two dogs who dress up in a trench coat and have to go to school. This story is mainly told from the dog's point of view. That means the dogs are the ones who are telling this story. So I want you to think for a moment, if a dog were to tell a story, think about kind of what dogs like, what dogs like to eat, what dogs like to do, what dogs don't like, um, because we're gonna run into a lot of that in my story. So you guys know me and you know that I have two dogs, Bo and Cooper, right? And you know, I've told you plenty stories about Cooper and if Cooper were to write a story, I know in Cooper's story, he would talk about loving tennis balls and loving sticks and loving his toys and and Bo, Bo would talk about just kind of chilling, laying down all the time. He's kind of lazy, um, but Bo, Bo really loves his treats and Bo's so sweet. So I want you to think of a dog that you know, maybe it's your own dog, maybe it's a dog you've seen on TV, and just activate that schema that you have about dogs and what you know about dogs because that's gonna help us um, when we read this story. So we're gonna read the first chapter today, chapter one, two dogs in a trench coat. Two dogs in a trench coat, go to school. It is dedicated, it says, for Matt, who started it all. Chapter one. Waldo was pacing the perimeter. He was a small and scruffy dog who smelled like kibble, plus something else he'd rather not discuss. All right, so we meet our first dog, you guys. This is Waldo. And it described him. Did you catch the describing words? I'll read it again. Listen for the describing words. Waldo was pacing the perimeter. He was a small and scruffy dog. See, so he's the small dog. He's very scruffy. His name is Waldo. Waldo walked from room to room, checking all the doors and windows. What was he checking for? Stray meatballs. Squirrels. Squirrels were a real threat and required constant vigilance. He also had to check for his humans. Every day they escaped, despite Waldo's best efforts. He begged, he pleaded, he made his eyes extra sad. And still, every day, they escaped, somehow. Do humans really escape? No. We leave, right? We leave to go to work, to go to school, to go outside. But in a dog's mind, we're escaping that house and we're leaving them behind. So Waddle tries everything that he can um, to get his humans to stay. I love the illustration on this page, how you can see Waldo and you don't see the human, but you just see the what? What would this be? Yeah, you just see the shadow. Even though the humans got out every day, Waldo was the best at his job. Had a squirrel ever gotten into the house, for instance? No, never. And while he had yet to find a stray meatball, he was very good at finding odd bits of cheese around the refrigerator, and he cleaned them all up, as a good dog should. He was a professional. <laughs> so Waldo doing what dogs do best, sniffing out that leftover food and cleaning up off the kitchen floor. What do you see spying in the window? <laughs> 
Roxy was a lot bigger than Wado. She had helped him pace the perimeter earlier, but then she got to the part of the front hall with the wood floors and her back feet kept slipping and, and then she was lying down and, and then she was napping. So here is Sassy and it said Sassy was much what? Much bigger. And look, zzz, we can tell that Sassy is sleeping. Every afternoon, a square of sun came in the window and made a warm spot on the floor. It was very important for Sassy to nap in the sun every day. It was her job. She also kept the squirrels out of the house. Have there ever been a squirrel in the house? Not one. Sassy was the best at what she did. Not only did she keep all of the squirrels away, but she also let the humans rub her belly, which they love to do. So, so far we've met Wado and we have met Sassy. Remember, Wado was the smaller dog and he's scruffy and he's constantly on patrol. And then there's Sassy who's bigger um, and a little more, what do you say? A little more maybe lazier. <laughs> Sassy had reached the good part of her nap where the sun was so hot, it was like a blanket of fire. Plus, she was so relaxed she couldn't move. The only thing ru ruining this stellar nap was Wado. He kept walking by her and clearing his throat, which sounded like a bullfrog doing a dog impression. How can you sleep when there's so many squirrels and imminent intruders? asked Wado. Sassy lifted her head. She sneezed. The sun made her sneeze. And whenever she sneezed, she sneezed 15 times in a row. <laughs> there are intruders? Imminent intruders. That mean there might maybe be some in the next year. That's not really what that means, said Sassy. Also, our humans might be back any second. You know they won't come back for another 22 minutes. I'm going back to sleep. There's something else we need to talk about, said Wado. Are you sure? Because I need to nap. Something absolutely must be done about this school situation. <sighs> oh, fine, said Sassy, sitting up. Let's do something about it. But what? It had been going on for a while. Every day, Wado and Sassy's boy, Stuart, trudged off to this awful place called school. Wado and Sassy knew it was awful because every night Stuart's parents asked him what he did at school, and he said, nothing. Plus, he smelled like a weird mix of boredom and anxiety. This school place was clearly the worst. I've got a plan said Wado. Oh, really? said Sassy. What? You don't think it's a good plan? You haven't told me what it is yet. You're always so negative, Sassy, said Wado. I I'm not being negative. You just haven't told me what your plan is. Wado padded around the room. He checked the doorways and looked under the table. He made sure there wasn't a spy near the refrigerator and got and got distracted by a muffin crumb. Sassy yipped to get his attention. Hey, Mr. Investigator, what's your plan? <laughs> oh, right, said Wado. Like I said, we need a plan to deal with this whole problem. So, are you ready? Yes, said Sassy. <laughs> Maybe you should sit down. It's a good plan. Fine. Sassy sat. Maybe you should lie down. Maybe we should both lie down for a bit. Just tell me the plan already. The plan is, well, first we get an airplane. Oh, biscuits, are you kidding me? Where are we going to get an airplane? Said Sassy. Uh, I don't know, the airplane store? Or order it from that uh, internet thing? No. Shh. Someone's coming, said Sassy. What do you mean? Shh, let's bark. <laughs> the 
The dogs commence the standard bark and waggy greet procedure to remind the humans that the Wado and Sassy household protection and face looking service was as relevant as ever. Stuart sat on the floor to pet his dogs. He was a rumpled kid who didn't mind some dog slobber on his cheeks or muddy paw, pr paw prints on his jeans. <laughs> You're the best dogs in the world, said Stuart. You're better than all of the humans. He's just stating facts, said Wado. Yeah, kids speaking the truth, said Sassy, licking Stuart's chin. If he likes us that much, why doesn't he give us hot dogs all the time? said Waldo. I don't know about you, but that's one of my favorite feelings is to come home um, and get greeted by the dogs right away. They always give out so much love. That's a good question, said Sassy. Just then, Stuart's dad walked in and the dogs waggly greeted him although he was more reserved than Stuart and they learned they weren't allowed to jump on his pants to lick his elbows. Hey, kiddo, said his father, how was school? Stuart sighed, boring, sassy met Waldo's eye. Yep, the school problem was just as bad as ever. Well, great, said Stuart's father, good for you. You know what I always loved about school? Lunch. Oh boy, lunch was great. When was the last time I had a bologna sandwich? Why don't we eat those anymore? Yes, said Sassy. I have no idea what a bologna sandwich is, but my inner dog sense is telling me it would be fantastic. I didn't have a bologna sandwich, said Stuart. I ate the lunch you packed for me this morning. Oh, right. This is worse than I thought, waddled Toad Sassy. Why? I saw that sandwich the father made. It had sprouts, low-fat soy cheese. The side dish was tiny carrots. I like tiny carrots, said Sassy. Better than bacon? No, of course not. You know what would be good, said Sassy. Bacon wrapped around some of those tiny carrots, said Bottle. But never mind that. What I'm saying is, Stuart must be seriously glum to have eaten that lunch. Oh, poor Stuart. Wado closed his eyes for a moment in deep concentration. I think, he said, that we have to make sure Stuart never leaves the house again. And that is chapter one. I will read chapter two to you guys tomorrow. So that is the beginning of Two Dogs and a Trench Coat. So we have met Wado and we have met Sassy and we know that they want to try to stop their human Stuart from going to that awful place called school. Now I want you to sit and think for just a moment. Do you think school is awful? Hmm. I don't. I love school. I really miss school. But do you think Wado and Sassy really know what school is like or really even know what Stuart does at school? Probably not. But in their minds, stopping him from going to school is their plan. So they need to think of a plan to stop Stuart from going to school. Do you think they will be successful? We'll have to wait and find out. All right, stay tuned. Bye, first graders.